What's going on guys and welcome back to episode 15 of the Calling Sessions Poker Vlog and first things first, I mean, we have to, like, we can't even begin to thank y'all, like a thousand of y'all, we we had a thousand subscribers, like that's wild. That's a lot of people. A thousand, a thousand a people decided, people. hey, these guys content, we want to see it, and we have no idea why. He does doing. <laughs> people don't. <laughs> we're doing our best and like, we, we, like. We appreciate just it. Genuinely, like we appreciate, we appreciate it. Like it's, we appreciate the support. It's just crazy to us. But uh, this channel's definitely grown a lot more than we definitely anticipated. <laughs> ever. Um, we never really thought we'd get to this point, at least this quickly. So, um, yes, just a heartfelt thank you guys for watching our content, supporting us, subscribing. Um, but you know what? Let's just get to the felt and. Yeah, we'll just see you there. For this first hand, we're gonna look down at Queen Nine of Diamonds in the cutoff. Um, we're going to open to ten dollars, and we're gonna get called by the button and both of the uh, both of the blinds. So four ways to the flop of Ace Nine Seven Rainbow. Um, blind check to me. Uh, here I can see both checking and betting. Um, you know, multi way. I'm obviously not gonna. I don't have a very strong hand. But at the same time, I can deny equity by betting. So that's what I like to do. And I end up betting $17. Um, the button calls and both of the blinds fold. So heads up to a turn. That is the five of hearts. Um, we don't improve. Eight six, gets, eight, six gets there. So we check and the button checks back. Um, heads up to a river. That is the king of clubs. I check and he ends up betting $40. Um, in this spot... This is like kind of a, like, I mean, I have a pretty marginal hand, but I feel like if he had an ace, he would bet that on the turn. And so like, this guy seemed like was betting a lot of like just random hands, um, just to bet pri uh, previously. So I can see him betting either a worse nine, a seven, um, and, or just like maybe a hand like 10, eight, jack 10. So for this reason, I end up calling and he turns over king three of spades. So he rivered a pair against us. And yeah, uh, I think, I don't think it was a terrible call against a particular opponent, but he obviously had a speed. So it is what it is, I guess. Um, on to the next one. In this hand, we're gonna look down at ace jack off in the cutoff after a single limp. We're gonna make it $10 and it's gonna fold around to the limper who is going to make the call. We're gonna go heads up to a flop of ace king nine rainbow and he checked dark so it's gonna be on us here against this uh particular opponent uh i decided to actually size up here because if he's got any piece uh including gutters or bottom pair uh i think he's gonna be continuing so i go ahead and just bet 16 uh typically i'd be betting a little smaller here but you know it is what it is he makes the quick call we go heads up to a turn, which is an offsuit three, completing the rainbow board. He checks dark yet again. I go ahead and check back for a little bit of deception. And the river is actually a jack, so there we go. Improving a two pair. I mean, queen 10 definitely in his range. Not a large enough part to be concerned about. This time, he decides to lead for $16, and that's just not going to be enough. Uh, I tank a little bit before raising to $60 and he doesn't think about it for too long before making the call and I uh, have no idea what he had but uh, we are good and uh, we're going to be taking down that pot for this next hand I'm going to look down at Jack 7 off um, now you might be asking why am I playing Jack 7 off well I was on the button and you know I'm on the button it's a pretty good position to be in so there's going to be two limbs in front of me. I'm going to raise up to $14 on the button. And only the small bond is going to call. Both of the limpers, both of the limpers fold. Interesting. So um, we're going to go heads up to a flop of queen eight three rainbow. Complete whiff. However, he's going to check to me. I'm still going to take a stab at it. I'm going to bet $12. And he's going to end up making the call. Um, turn is going to be the nine of clubs. We have a gutter ball now. We have equity. So we're gonna bet again, and uh, we're gonna bet thirty dollars this time. And once again, he's gonna call. So, um, yeah, gonna I'm preparing to fire the river, which is the four of diamonds. Um, he ends up thinking for a while. Um, 
I was he was to my immediate left and I wasn't really watching him and I asked him actually if the action was on me because there was a lull in the action and he ends up saying nah it's still on me I'm thinking about whether or not I want to bluff at it and then just open mucks and I'm like oh okay then I mean I was fully prepared to fire the river but still um, it feels nice to win the hand without even having to, having to risk any chips. So, um, pretty good result with Jack High. I will take it. In this hand, we're going to do something a little different. Um, since I didn't have very many hands, uh, Sal's going to go over his hand uh, with me for the first time. I have not heard it. Um, so, I can give my unbiased opinion and my in the moment reaction. Also, we're doing this because I didn't have very many hands and I wanted to be included. All right, so the hand starts out, I'm in the big blind with three deuce of diamonds. There's going to be three limps and then I'm gonna check in the big blind. Um, no value in raising. Yeah. Um, but anyways, flop comes king for five with two spades. Small blind checks, what would you do here? Um, I'm down with betting or checking, but how many players are in the hand? Four. Total. Then one of them being the small Four one. Four total? So pot's eight dollars. Pot's eight dollars. Riveting. I mean, right like, yeah, riveting. I mean, this is where I think you should probably be checking, but I'm definitely down to bet five dollars here. <laughs> well, so I end up betting six. Okay, yeah. No, same thing, basically. And then only one guy calls who's going to be the villain. Okay. Um, go ahead up to a turn, which is a an offsuit six. Oh, that's a nice little turn card, binkity-bonk. Mm -hmm. Um, so obviously I think we should definitely continue betting here. Um, yeah, so end up betting $15, nothing mm -hmm. off track, track here. However, this is where things go off the rails. Okay. Whoa. Oh, train crash. Boom, boom. <laughs> okay. Anyways, he ends up raising to $50. Um, I think we've got a pretty clear cut call here, you know, um, because I mean, I guess you can raise and try to gain value from like the flush draws and whatnot, but I, I think it's more profitable to uh, call and allow him to keep bluffing. Yeah, um, I mean, I thought this was pretty a, a pretty standard call. I figured if he's raising turn, he's gonna be and better. and if you're better, like you know, if he's like value betting some weird two pair or something or a set, like you know, he's still gonna value bet those when you check. So you you know, uh, there's still plenty of value. I I think calling and allowing him to can you continue uh bluffing is way more valuable than just raising yeah also when you like i don't know if your hand's super strong because i mean the pot was small people will call with those gutters you know um so i mean yeah i think i think calling turns definitely the most profitable play it's what i would do cool yeah i mean that's what i ended up doing um just because again i felt like if i um just call he's gonna be betting river and I can evaluate there. Yeah. Um, so I call. River is the Jack of Diamonds. So no flush completes, no draws get there, except for our draw. Um, or I guess no flush draw gets there. Anyways, I check and he bets $125. It's an enticing spot to raise, but it's really tough to gain. Because you didn't get raised on the flop with a flush draw on board. So, I mean... Maybe I'm just a nit, but I, I, I think I'd just call here. Uh, I don't think folding's anywhere within question. Like, you, I don't think you should ever fold here. Yeah, um, well, so I basically, I was in the tank for a solid minute or two. Um, just because I wasn't sure if I want to call or, or raise. raise, yeah. Um, I think calling is definitely the more... Well, calling is a more conservative play. I know, riveting. Uh -huh. um, but, I mean, I guess, like, the question was, like, could I get value from a set or two pair? Like, can I get a value from 6-5, 4-5? Yeah. So, um, the reason... I think 6-5 is more likely. 6-5 um, is the most likely hand you can get value like from. Six, just if it's in an LM pod, maybe they get like yeah. six. Yeah. I mean, it's really, it's really tough because I think, like, the flop two pairs and stuff are going to be raising you. Um, so like we can discount, like not, we're not going to completely throw them away, but I think we discount them. Yeah. Like, you know, 50 to 75% of the time they're going to be raising them in, in my opinion, especially this player. Um, so I mean, we're, I think he's going to be betting this amount with missed flush draws, you know, better straights, two pairs and sets. But I think, you know, like I said, 50 to 75% of the time sets and two pairs are going to be. Um, raising flops. So, I mean, like, 6-5 is, 
and king six are the only two two pair combinations so i actually don't hate just calling yeah well that's what i end up doing and we get the bad news he has seven eight off so he oh. had the nut straight i had the bottom the dummy in so we lose a, a pretty big pot there and the biggest mistake you made was getting there why would you do that i know just hit the ace instead sal then you have the best hand <laughs> or i just miss and i can keep on bluffing at it fair enough fair enough in this hand, there's going to be a straddle for $4. We're going to see an open to $10 for middle position. I look down at King 10 off on the button. I go ahead and make the call. Lines get out of the way and the straddle calls as well. So we're going to be going three ways to a flop, which is Queen 7 3, Rainbow. Uh, checks me. I think about taking a stab here, but take the conservative approach and decide to check back. The turn is an offsuit jack completing the second rainbow board. Um, checks to me again, and with the open ender now, I think it's fine to start bluffing. I fire for $20. The straddle makes a very quick call, and the initial razor folds. So we're going to be going heads up to a river, which is an offsuit deuce. Um, well, I guess all the deuces would be offsuit, but either way. This is where uh, I get a little confused because he decides to lead for $25. And I think the only strong hands he could have here are a set of threes, a set of sevens, and possibly a rivered set of deuces. I can see him playing all of the, those hands the same way. But I think he's going to have um, a lot of missed straight draws a lot of missed gutters or maybe like a bad jack or a bad queen that's trying to block bet but uh you know uh i get some devious intentions in mind um i feel that a lot of the time he'll probably be weak in this spot and i came here to put weak hands into tough spots uh, i'm not really repping too much when i do this though um not 100% sure whether I like this or not, but either way, I go ahead and raise it up to $95, and very quickly, our opponent tosses in a chip. I flip over my cards, <laughs> thinking it is a call <laughs> before the dealer announces all in, <laughs> so uh, really tough spot. Don't really know what to do here. Uh, I actually consider going for a mixed strategy of folding and then folding some more and uh maybe every now and then a hint of folding wouldn't be too bad so obviously getting the bad news uh he shows a set so yeah sometimes sometimes you get caught and not even not really getting caught but uh you know it's always nice to bluff and then just get you know ripped on so that hand doesn't go the way we want but that's all right we'll live the fight another day for this last hand we're gonna miss some of the action um I was about to go home and I had stopped recording at this point, but this ended up being a pretty interesting hand. Um, the under the gun is going to open to $10. The under the gun plus one and two are both going to call. Um, I'm in the cutoff and I have ace queen of clubs. I think a pretty easy spot to three bet. So I three bet to $55 trying to isolate and my plan does not work. We get three callers. Um, so we're going four ways to a flop that is already pretty big. And the flop ends up being 3-3-3. It checks to me. And admittedly, I wasn't sure what to do in this spot. Um, I don't really have, I don't haven't had a lot of studying. I haven't studied this spot a lot in three bit pods on a triple paired board or three of a kind board. But I figured betting small is the best way to go. Um, I have all the best hands here. I have aces, kings, queens, jacks, um, even the best ace highs most of the time. Um, so I think with those hands, I'm going to want to bet small. So having an ace-queen here, I think I also want to bet small. So I ended up betting $60. Um, the under the gun and the under the gun plus two both call. Um, go three ways to a turn. That is an offsuit six, completing the rainbow. Um, checks to me. Um, in this spot, if it was heads up, I think I would uh, jam here. I had just over a pot size bet behind. Um, again, this is I think I would do that. I think that's a good uh, play to do with aces, kings, queens, um, just because, again, inherently I have a range advantage. And the only thing I really lose to with those hands is pocket sixes at this point. Maybe ace three suited. Um, but I think um, 
I think the main uh, I ended up checking, but the main reason being the second uh, the person in the middle with two callers. I think it's unlikely to get through. Um, I think one of those guys has an overpair, pocket nines, pocket tens, probably, and I don't know if I can get them to fold there. Um, so I ended up checking back. Uh, so we go three ways to a river. That is an offsuit nine, and once again they check it to me. Once again, I have a decision here. I can either jam or just check back with my showdown value. I don't know if pocket or if ace queen's good here all that often, but I ended up checking back. Um, under the gun shows pocket eights, and under the, under the gun plus two shows ace queen off. So I think, in hindsight, I think a jam would have gotten through on the flop. Um, the under the gun player, I don't think can call with the guy behind him. And I think the guy behind them is going to fold with the ace queen um, once I jam there. So hindsight's 2020. Um, it was a very interesting spot. Weird. Probably played it poorly. Not too sure to be completely honest, but oh well. Um, yeah. Live and you learn. Yeah, so uh, a little bit of a grindy card dead session for me. The last two sessions for me have been kind of been like that. So. You know, that's part of poker. It is what it is. Um, had those two major hands other than that. Nothing nothing to report. Um, basically the same here. Uh, I had like, the hands I had were from two days. And even then, most of my hands just kind of went, went like, very, were very just standard, small pots. It was bleeding out, hemorrhaging money. Um, yeah. He lost. I I lost eight dollars, and I gotta say that one that one hurt. Um, yeah, I was not as fortunate. I lost uh, se around seven hundred over the two days. Um, so fun stuff, but you know, a minor setback for a, a major comeback. <laughs> yes, what he said. Um, once again, though, guys, thank you so much for the support. Uh, if what do you, uh, let us know in the comment section though what you think about the blind analysis. Um, that was a cool idea. We always. Um, discuss hands anyways, and I thought it might be like, yeah. a cool idea to like show y'all like our thought processes during the hands kind of especially from a Outsider's perspective all his idea like I thought it was pretty I thought it was a pretty cool thing to feature But anyway, let us know what y'all think we might do that more in the future and but yeah Thank y'all again so much for watching and we'll see y'all next time